Well, welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. I got to do some milling today, and I have got probably one of the largest logs I have ever had on the mill on it this morning by myself. It's a red oak. And I'm going to take Lisa's handy dandy, I guess you'd call that like a sewing tape or whatever, to try to get the circumference of this log at the largest end and at the smallest end it's not going to be a drastic difference but just to kind of give you an idea of the size of log you can mill on the easy boardwalk junior this is the biggest one and it's really larger than i like to mill but i got it so i'm gonna build this thing up guys thanks for stopping in at piney woods hit that like and subscribe if you haven't and if you have as always y'all we appreciate you let's see if we can actually mill this beast So let's just see if we can get this tape around it. It's a 60 inch tape. And it looks like we're about four to five inches shy. So that tells you the circumference. And we'll take a, just a measurement side to side. Looks like it's pretty even log all the way around. And we're at almost 20 inches one side to the other 21 and a half there and there are certain ways to measure the actual diameter of a log but this just gives you an idea of what we're dealing with circumference and the width of the log now easy boardwalk junior is designed to mill up to a 30 inch log and you can do it problem is you cannot put your log clamps up and actually get them attached because when you try to do that your mill head will not go past them it just hits them so the only solution i've ever come up with for milling such a large diameter log is just to put some boards down on each side of the log to hold it in place and y'all this thing's so heavy it is not going to move it it may shake just a little bit as the blade is going through but i have a nice fresh blade on so it shouldn't shake much and once we actually get this thing into a cant the log clamps will actually work and we can stabilize the cant and get a good cut on all the pieces we're doing here all right let's measure the other side the smaller side and it looks like we're probably about four inches different circumference on this end of the log so not too drastic 18 and a half width wise on this side and once again y'all there's ways to do measuring to get your actual size of a log uh, putting a stake out on one end and drawing your drawing your strings and getting the measurement, but I never fool with all that, y'all. I just know what I can mill and what I can't, and this is this is pushing my limitations. I can mill it. The thing is, is this log is extremely heavy. My little let's just take a look at the tractor real quick. All right, y'all, my L twenty five oh one. DT version of the Kubota is rated to be able to lift I believe it's 1100 pounds and that is pretty much at the back of your bucket right around here where these pins and all are and that's to actually lift it up and sustain it and it's got more breakout force in the curl to actually get something on board and and honestly y'all for the size tractor that this is that's as much as I'd ever want to lift with it. Um, it's a whole lot stouter. If you've seen videos of me using this thing, then people realize. But if you're, I tell folks, if, if you're not experienced at all in carrying these heavy loads, uh, don't go gung-ho as soon as you get one of these 25 horsepower L-series Kubotas and just think you can use it like a bulldozer. It's, it's not a bulldozer or a track loader or anything like that. But it'll do a lot of stuff but i was able to lift this log but barely 
So that lets me know from experience from lifting pallets of feed, this log right now is probably in the neighborhood of 850 to 950 pounds, somewhere along there, because it wouldn't curl it at the end of my forks. I had to drive all the way in and then curl. So it's quite a bit of weight y'all on this machine, but it will handle it. The log was about 10 feet long. The only problem was there was um, there was some damage I noticed on the pith and it was too wide to actually fit on the mill back there. So I had to trim off just a little bit on there and I still have got over an eight foot log here to work with. So let's fire up the mill and get some timbers cut because that's what's coming out of this red oak today. So far the log looks pretty good. You can tell where there's been some bugs in it. And that's probably why this tree was beginning to die. I believe old Hank said that it was beginning to die. And that's who I'm milling for today, just hanging around. But so far so good. Press blades cutting right through it. And we'll see if I can roll this thing over y'all. It's, it's a chore, but I'll show you a little trick. Y'all, my dad taught me that. He watched me struggling with the last big red oaks that were on here when Carolina Hill Country was over. And he said, put you some PVC pipe on the back of those clamps that'll help it slide. And y'all, it works great. I was able to do that all by myself. And y'all, that's, that's a heavy log. 
So thanks, Dad. Let me get this thing into a cant real quick, and then we'll cut some timbers. We're hoping for some six by six and four by six. I've got me a game plan on getting a six by six out of this. Looks like I can get at least one six by six and maybe a couple of four by sixes. I'm trying to work around the pith, the juvenile part of that tree. It doesn't look great, but I believe I can get a decent six by six just above that pith, maybe just a little bit in there, and then flip the log and get maybe one or two four by sixes. So that's what I'm going to try. So the first cut's made. I got one six by six, one four by six on there. A little bit of tension in that log. Saw it, maybe you saw it, it kind of popped up there at the end. Shouldn't be too bad. Now, I can actually get a few one inch boards before I get my last six by six and four by six off of this. It's all about maximizing the log so you don't have a ton of waste, y'all. Because these oaks, they aren't cheap. To take down, mill, or anything.
y'all you can see for the most part I was able to stay away from the pith of this tree got into it a little bit with these last one inch boards that I cut but the majority of it is remaining inside of one four by six and the reason I do that y'all is so that it has less of a tendency to bow up twist and all that stuff that way you're not wasting that juvenile section of the tree for firewood or something like that not that that's wasting because y'all we do firewood too <laughs> and that brings up another thing somebody commented a while back and said y'all are pretty much a variety show you don't just sawmill you don't just fire do firewood you don't just homestead you do it all and and y'all we do if you look around most folks are either firewood sawmill running tractors we do it all y'all this is how we live and this is what we love to do guys y'all i'll actually get quite a few nice wide one inch boards off of everything that i took off of there to get the cant ready to mill and we ended up with two six by sixes and two nice four by sixes and plenty of one inch boards y'all a lot of yield out of this log so i'm happy about that Guys, I'm also happy about y'all watching us. We appreciate you. We hope you have a good day, a great week. And Lord willing, in the creek don't rise. We'll see you on the next one.